Velma, episode 7, the man-hating episode. Don't you know those pesky folk just have it so easy? No wonder men are so desperate to hold onto their power. This is the easiest sh ever. As a guy, I can do anything. I suppose it's natural, though, for the creators in Hollywood. If you've lived your life being given everything on a silver platter without having to earn any of it, you just assume everyone else got there the same way. I mean, can you imagine if these people had to compete off merit? They'd soon find out that trolls weren't the only thing that lived under a bridge. Hell, we could name a street corner after them. God, that was amazing! Guys put zero pressure on you to wash your hands! Yes, in this episode, Velma dresses up as a man and realizes that even though she is repulsive as a woman, those same repulsive traits are celebrated in men. And I think it's good to know that even in her delusional fantasy land, she still gets one thing right. She is absolutely repulsive. Wait a second, as a guy, everyone thinks my worst qualities as a girl are awesome. Well, I gotta squirt. Oh my god, and you're hilarious! So join me as we explore the dirty, dank hole, which is Velma. We start with Velma looking for clues in her mom's old scripts. The only thing I found in them was a cure for my insomnia. Well, at least we found out where Velma gets it from. But she starts looking for jinkies all over and she can't find it anywhere. At no point did she consider going back to the source material and maybe watching Scooby-Doo. No, shut up, we can't reference that. It will introduce a bar of quality we can't compete with. Nor was it Jinkies the party clown. Jinkies, the clown! See? <laughs> I think I've proved my point. Her father gets invited to the Crystal Cove Fog Festival, and at this festival they will crown a Fog King. And this show just loves saying Fog King really fast, because they know what it sounds like. And I'm not going to do it, because I think the YouTube bot will probably think it's that as well. The issue is, what happens next is a conversation that I could only assume is a regular occurrence from Mindy Kaling. You know, where you come across as if you don't understand it, anything that's said, but then just try and pretend that you did all along. This was a fog posal. A fog posal? For fog fest. Fog fest? Are you having a stroke? No, I know what fog posals and fog fest are. And while we were asking questions about them as if you had no idea what was being said, you deluded little bint. This is like where someone says something really stupid online and then they go, oh no, I was just trolling. If the questions that you ask make you indistinguishable from someone who's incredibly thick, I'm just going to assume that's the correct answer. And Velma's amazed I can't believe this is going on with a serial killer. It turns out there isn't, because it was all down to a ghost, which you actually helped prove. People would rather believe in a ghost than stay inside for a few nights just so they can party? I really hope that's not trying to get at what I think you were trying to get at there. I can't believe people want to go outside. Don't you understand how dangerous outside is? Velma, there is a place in the world where you can be 100% safe at all times by just staying indoors. Call it prison. And for you, Valmer, I'll do you a special deal. Buy one life sentence, get one free. But due to the risk of a serial killer, they've come up with a cunning plan to make sure that everyone is safe. No girl will be admitted to Fogfest without a date to protect them. And as you can imagine, Velma is not pleased about this. Oh, it's like the 1600s. What do you expect them to do next? Start reproducing at a rate above replacement? This is insanity. So Fogfest is not only dangerous, it's sexist too. Based economy. No, if anything, it's like attractivist. And it's not even really that, because it's not that you need a date. It's that you need a man that's willing to suffer your company for at least three hours. And Valma struggles to get one that can stand up for three minutes, so I can understand why she's not happy about the arrangement. And like anyone that's gone through life causing problems for themselves and they don't want to take accountability for it, obviously, she starts calling everyone ists. Cut to Fred and his parents aren't happy that he has absolutely no taste in humans. It's like we sell the best of products and you want to go with that. The only thing she could model is a paper bag over her face. And so to sell the best, you've got to be the best. And if you don't win that Fog King crown, I told you they did it deliberately because of how it sounds, then we won't have you back in this house. So you can take Valna, shove her where the sun don't shine, and get with someone which actually looks like a human being. So we've got this woman, I don't know her name, talking to Gigi. You know, like the horse. But Novel springs out of the locker and invites Gigi to the Fog Cave event. Nothing scarier than a world where we're not together. Will you go to Fog Fest with me? A man trying to get with a horse? I feel like I've seen this video before. What? Mm. I'll have to think about it. What do you mean you'll have to think about it? You were just begging him to a second ago. But I still wanted him to ask me to fuck as. And now we get this. I'll have to think about it. Dump her, dude. Dump her immediately. Preferably off a bridge. But if I say yes, and the ghost of your grandma... You were begging him to, and I was like, oh, well, if I give you all of these different rules, will you then obey me and be under my thumb for the rest of my life? Okay. Seriously, Norval, get out of here. It looks like Velma's personality is contagious. At this point, you should be taking one look at that face and putting her in the locker. I'm surprised she even got scared by the ghost considering how dead she is inside. <laughs>
We find out, though, that the fog event has, like, special magical powers or something? You enter the fog in one place and get teleported to a random location. You see monsters in the fog, only for it to turn out to be nothing. It's just someone you know holding something weird. Like a box set of the Velma series. Earth, are you doing with that? That was a waste of money. No, no, they were giving them out for free as sort of enhanced interrogation devices. So far, no one has managed to get past episode 4 without spilling everything. And in the fog, items can magically teleport or clothes can switch between people. Everyone just thinks it's hilarious and not the fact that this is weird magic, people, what's going on? I mean, I never knew that magic existed in Scooby-Doo, but apparently it does now. And my bottom-of-the-barrel kill-myself desperation date is taken. Balma, you can't even go with yourself, and no one is more bottom-of-the-barrel than you. That isn't a desperation date, that's just your level. We jump over to Daphne, and Fred is trying to get her to go to the fog fest with him. And he has a rather interesting tactic. But look, ow! What the hell, Fred? Go to Fog Fest with me. That would 100% work, and we all know it. He wanted me to go to a festival so he could hit me in the face with his massive wad of cash. Please. Stop throwing money at my face. I mean, if you're giving me that much money, it seems a waste for that to be what goes over my face. No, Daphne, Fred's really asking me. I tell you, Valma, someone gives her two a bit of attention and suddenly she thinks everything's about her. You have got this all backwards. If you want a man to put up with you, you're gonna have to give him money. Oh, Fred just really wants to ask me out because I brainwashed him with a book that ruined his sense of taste. That also explains why he's been listening to a lot of Michael Bolton. And I'm supposed to be scared. He's back into basic hot girls who work out- Oh no, he's into hot girls! The horror! Although the less said about people who think they own the light that bounces off their face, the better. Especially when they're working out. And it's not their face. Feral, 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 feral. I'm not sure why you'd go out in public wearing something that makes you uncomfortable to be observed in, in public, but you know, the world of delusion, what can I say? Velma isn't a personality that exists solely in cartoon form. Excuse me? Wait, you said Fog King, not Fog. In that case, I will happily go with you, Fred. And believe me, I'm more than willing to ride a joke into the ground, but this manages to do it in 25 minutes. I haven't seen a mediocre idea this overused since I made a video about She-Hulk walking into a door. It is nice to see Fred's internal screaming, though, as he's being forced into Velma's company. But Velma realizes that she's been treating her mom's scripts with the same amount of respect that this show deserves, by just using them to hit spiders with. Although that's still probably more respect than this show deserves, now I think about it. The script leads her to find a hidden message on the note. It's a phone number, which coincidentally goes straight through to the killer's mobile phone. Better not make a skin suit out of my mom, just because brown don't crack. Yep. She said that. I feel like there's some lines in this series where I don't need to actually say anything. I could just let them hang there, gently rotting in the breeze. I could just imagine the writer's room. <laughs> this will be funny. Next, we're going to talk about how all the women in the office have synchronized. Everybody will be able to relate to this. Trust me, that's funny because it's true. Damn it, he hung up. That's not the first time a man's hung up on you. Come on. You've had it every other day of life. You think you'd be used to it by now, surely? I'd be more shocked if one said goodbye to you. Actually, no. Hello. She actually doesn't know the normal greeting on a phone because every time she's ever called somebody, everyone just goes, oh, it's you again. As far as she's aware, that's a social norm. Unfortunately, she hears enough noises on the phone call to put two and two together and get four, which is how we end up at Fog Cove. Now, for some reason, he does walk around Fogfest with a knife out, not doing anything to anybody. It seems a bit redundant to me. But Velma being Velma realizes I can't go to Fogfest because I'm an insufferable cow and no one can put up with my company. But I also can't go there alone the way I am. So our only hope of getting in is makeup. Like a lot. Because if there's one thing that men are renowned for, it's using a lot of makeup. Seriously, you wanna look like a dude? Just pound that foundation on, it'll work a treat. Velma's never been the brightest button in the box, but at this point, her IQ is below freezing. But along come Velma, complete with moustache, and we're subjected to a sight that none of us needed to see, but for some reason, we're all here to witness it. And there may be some out there that will blame me for making the video, but I think by episode seven, we all knew what we're in for in this one. And as you can tell by my moustache, I am a male human. I could believe a lot of things about you, Velma, but human is pushing it a bit far. But as you'd expect, she gets past the two mums without a hiccup. I don't need your mansplaining who you are to me. Although her fellow person of dangly bits is a bit more observant and has a remarkably self-aware commentary about the show. There's something funny about you. Not LOL funny. Definitely not LOL funny. This show has never been funny in its life, which is weird considering it's meant to be a comedy. Although I think it's meant to be a comedy because what they kind of say next means that it's not actually meant to be funny. And see if you could explain it down in the comments, because I think they try and redefine what comedy is. But more thoughtful and well-observed, like a female-driven comedy. Yeah, female-driven comedy, not supposed to be laugh-out-loud funny. It's just thoughtful and well-observed. If someone puts on a comedy show in the woods and nobody laughs, is it a comedy? Even if someone tries to say that this show is thoughtful and well-observed, and it isn't, 
That's still not the definition of a comedy. All you're doing there would be describing reality. That would be the clap comedy. Ha ha, I agree. Thank you for pointing out reality that I agree with. Thank you for reaffirming my position in this television show. That's not comedy. Comedy makes you laugh. And a good joke makes you laugh even if you try not to. Because laughter is meant to be a reflex. Laughter isn't supposed to be a conscious effort. It's something that your body does without you being in control of it. And I think this is their admission that they're not funny. And they know they're not, so they're trying to redefine it to the point where they are. Haha, <laughs> I was never trying to be funny, actually. I didn't want you to laugh. I wanted you to think about the state of the universe. Well, if you wanted that, dear, you'd have to describe the same one I live in. Because you, apparently, just live in your own little face. Are you suggesting I am a woman dressed as a man? No, <coughs> ah! You get pile-drived into the ground. There'd be a whole range of wrestling moves done until you got sent to A&E. And we just accurately observe the world. Observe this bit. Velma goes on top of a tall ride to scout to see if she can spot anything across the park. And she does. Unfortunately, she's stuck up there. So she starts to climb down the ladder on the other side. Although at that moment, the ride goes down and we get this. And all I can say is brace yourself for some excitement. No, I can't die. Sylvie's going to put a treadmill in my room. Unfortunately, she survived. Personally, I think that would have been the perfect ending to a seven episode series. I don't know why the rest of the series exists. You've already peaked and given your audience the best entertainment they can do. It's just going to be downhill from here, I'm afraid. Fred goes around bribing everyone to vote for him for Fog King. Velma falls over a load of rubbish bags. And Daphne sees a man rolling around in trash and thinks, whoa, that's the person for me. Where does your go? Mm, who is that tasty snack? Remember, they said that female-driven comedy is about accurate, real-world observations. And that's why the attractive women in their show have incredibly low standards. She's not going to go for the richest guy in town with literally more money than sense. Oh no, she is going to go for the man rolling around in trash. We've actually got real world pictures of Daphne's preferred partner right here. Now Velma tries to phone the serial killer and then says this for some reason when he doesn't answer. At least I seem to have scared the serial killer away from Fogfest. How? How do you think you scared him off? He doesn't even know you're there. He doesn't even know who you are. You literally just saw him from on top of a ride and now you're like, right, that's it. I've seen him. I physically absorb the light off his face into my eyeballs and that means he's vanished. Besides, don't you know you should never look at a serial killer in public? That's feral. Feral, 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 feral. Just because someone's in a public place doesn't mean that you can observe them, you lunatic. So Daphne decides to start eating like she's some kind of animal. We're impressed. Can you teach me how to unhinge my jaw like that? I'll take that for one of the top 10 things that have never happened happened in the world. Oh, Dave, I just love how you eat like a pig. It's really doing it for me. That's why there's a snail trail all the way from over there. I couldn't resist. This entire show is written like you've never come into contact with another human being in your life. But that's such a double standard. Oh, it's such a double standard. Yes, that's because we have different standards for things which are different. Congratulations. You have now reached the understanding of a 12-year-old. Please, convince to the next stage of evolution. Every day at lunch, you're like, hey, mayonnaise isn't soup. Mayonnaise isn't soup. Why are you drinking mayonnaise? The way that was casually dropped is like the writer's bugbear. It's like, I hate when people tell me this. The people at home will understand though. Now, if you want the perfect example of someone that's lived a life of privilege, never had to struggle and has had everything given to them on a plate, well, we're about to see it. Everything that happens from this point on has been the creation of someone which has never struggled. They've been given everything they have without earning any of it. And so they think that all the people above them got there the same way. To them, talent, hard work, and success is just someone being given more free stuff than they got, and that's not fair. Whoever wrote the next 12 minutes is probably one of the most bitter people on earth. Well, I got a squirt. Oh my god, and you're hilarious. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> he said he was gonna get rid of wastewater from his body. Oh, it's hilarious. That's what, such a great joke. I mean, it would be funnier in real life than anything that's happened in this show, but it's just not a high bar. So Norville and Fred fight over who can be Fog King. And the whole thing is Norville going, you deserve a crown for me, Gigi. You know, the horse. But really, we all know it's all about him. Yeah, he's trying to pretend it's for her, but actually it's just his own insecurities as a man being played out in public. Because they're so insecure, all of them, all the time. That's why they do things like post selfies online all the time, film themselves when they're in the gym, and wear makeup. They're just so insecure about themselves. Feral, 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 feral. <sighs> Couldn't have said it better myself, Gigi. You know, like the ho Okay, now as ever, there is a queue for one of the toilets and not for the other one. Largely because the guys go in and leave, and the other side just sits on their phone all the time. All I'm saying is if you had the same layout as the blokes and you just line them all up against a wall without any of the barriers, I don't think they'd stay in there quite that long. Maybe you've just made everyone too comfortable. What can I say? That was amazing. Guys put zero pressure on you to wash your hands. What do you expect them to do? Drag you back by the collar when you don't? 
stand by the door and tut and shake at their head in shame? What are they doing on the other side that puts pressure on you? This is what I really want to know. This is someone at the door handing out fines. Even though I didn't catch the serial killer, at least tonight's not a total loss. Velma doesn't have the highest standards. She's like, yeah, okay, so someone did get murdered. But I didn't have to wash my hands when I pee, and that's a massive bonus. When I say that Velma is one of the most disgusting people on Earth, I genuinely mean it. Not even just for this, I just in general. Of course, at that moment, the fog takes her. She gets caught by Daphne, who, like I say, for some reason has incredibly low standards. Who are you? And it's not that she's drank so much she's seeing double, because two Velmas would be infinitely worse. It's not simply additive, it would multiply. But Daphne asks Velma to dance, and Velma decides that this is the best response. I'm a terrible dancer. My body is really only built to ram things. Yeah, men ramming things. It's basically the only thing they can do. They've never done anything else in their lives. Like, I don't know, built civilization in every single place on Earth where civilization has existed. They're all of time. Ah, they just ram things. It's fine. There's definitely a reverse parking joke in there somewhere if you want to look for it. It's just, I'm not going to say it. Of course, Velma can't resist Daphne, so they go on the dance floor and this is the perfect time to insult men again. And let's face it, this is Velma. On Velma, it's always the perfect time. It's so cute when guys pretend dancing is lame and half acid. I always knew they didn't live in reality. At this point, I'm not sure they even know what Earth is. I can understand why you've never met a man in California, but it seems like you've never met a woman as well. Is it all of me can't stand or just Daphne? I honestly don't know anymore. You don't find it annoying? I find it annoying if it helps. Any bozo can take over a dance floor just by doing the work. Where? When? Which dimension? Around who? Were well, you just brought up in California and were so off your face you think all of this actually happened? I can't tell anymore. So everyone else is like, Oh, you gotta do the worm? Oh, we love the worm. Why don't you just take over the entire dance floor and do the worm? And then we get to see the glory of Valma doing the worm. I didn't know I was going to see this and I never wanted to. I was more than happy living my life of perfect ignorance. But once you see this, the scales fall from your eyes and you just can't go back anymore. Worm! 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 <laughs> yeah! This is what the writer thinks it's like to be a man, everybody. I present to you. Masculinity, where you get celebrated by the world for lying on a floor. Some would say that to be a man is to build a house you'll never live in or plant a tree you'll never sit under the shade of. As far as Mindy's concerned though, it's this. What does it take to squash so much hate into one person? I'm not sure, but the outcomes of it are remarkable. Wait a second, as a guy, everyone thinks my worst qualities as a girl are awesome. I mean, at least you recognize your worst qualities. Just the same, it's such a massive list. Are you sure it's all of them though? Cause you've only been a man for a couple of hours. You barely made a dent in your absolutely repulsive characteristics. Repulsive characteristics, like randomly assaulting people. No time! For absolutely no reason whatsoever. Being a gross, disgusting human being that doesn't know how to eat properly. Somehow managing to do this, and I honestly have no idea how you even managed to do this. Also, the thumbs up afterwards. I don't know what that's meant to be. Honestly, love, it's not that impressive. It's not like you wrote your name in the snow. That's it. I know how to convince everyone there's still a serial killer on the loose. Oh well, yeah, all I've got to do is tell them, because don't you understand? I'm a man in every Everybody believes men. It's what they're renowned for all the time, just being believed, you know, in court or TikTok videos about gyms. Feral, 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 feral. Remember, female led comedy is just about accurate observations. So Valma gets on stage and acts with all the decorum you would expect from a deluded bint. As a man speaking authoritatively, you are going to listen to me and you are going to believe me. There's an ocean about 20 feet away. She can't weigh that much. I think if we eat really hard, we can make it. So she comes forth and tells them, well, the serial killer is still alive. Ghosts aren't real. That's what my daughter's been saying. For some reason I believe it more from you. That bit probably is accurate, but that's just because they're talking specifically about Valma. You just can't generalize Valma to, you know, normal people. She's a special case. A nutcase, you might say. Okay, well, we're safe for tonight because I scared the serial killer off. I don't know why you think that. You didn't scare him off. You haven't even spoken to him. He doesn't even know you're there. He doesn't even know you saw him from the top of a ride. You haven't even met him. This entire series is just going to end with her talking to a therapist. And she's like, oh, it was actually in my head all along. This is actually a plot line of how Harley Quinn was driven insane. <laughs> but don't you know, a man got up stage and lied to everybody. And so now they just want him to be Fog King. We're going to ignore that that's half the population and none of the ones in the crowd ever got treated that way. It's almost like Velma is a special, unique case, which doesn't actually reflect what they know to be reality. That would be unusual. Because, oh boy, do they celebrate Velma.
Gigi, do you trust me? No, not at all. See? On the one hand, we want to say men get treated like this. On the other hand, we just want to constantly dump on them all all the time. It doesn't really work when you're like, men are so privileged and everyone believes them. When you're showing in your own show that they get treated like filth. We're all gonna say, Norval, leave Gigi the horse alone. No wonder men are so desperate to hold onto their power. This is the easiest ever. As a guy, I can do anything. Spoken like someone that's never earned anything in their entire life. Why am I stuck this successful when there's all those people above me? I mean, I've got given everything for free and so they've just got given more. If my life has been incredibly easy, Theirs must be even easier. Careful, Mindy, you're telling on yourself. As a guy, I can do anything. But she goes and does stand-up comedy and is obviously hilarious. That's the most unrealistic part of the episode, the fact that Valma could make anyone laugh. So probably stick to observing inside your own delusions. She turns up, unshaved, just gives someone a resume saying, I'm awesome, yawns in front of him, and just immediately gets the job over the um, other applicant who is, of course, what shall be known as testosterone challenged. Like most people in Hollywood, actually. But he gets the job because he just turned up and that's what men do. And he gets given a gift basket full of wine, food, and soap because that's what men want. What can I say? This show reads us like an open book. Decides to do a piece of art and immediately just becomes a success. Men just have it so easy. It's incredible for all of us. That's why half the population is just massively successful and uh, the other half isn't. Wait, hang on. The best artist ever. Stop, I just can't handle these witty observations of a female-led comedy. Fred gets kicked out of his house because he's lost the crown. I bet you'd be great at fighting. Yep, I told you they were riding that joke into the ground. Just like Daphne's gonna be riding Valma into the- Okay. So she takes Valma outside, but she's drinking. She falls over and gets saved under the atmospheric beam of a streetlight. Daphne, for some reason, trusts this tall, strong, handsome person that she's never met before, who is half a size and 100% a two. What can I say? It's just Valma's pure animal magnetism. I don't even know what animal I'm talking about. Cockroaches, maybe? I don't know. But either way, Daphne confides in Valma. I found out my parents were criminals and basically repeats the same story from last episode. But just as the two of them are about to do the deed. Velma. Oh, that's my actual mustache, Fred. I just didn't shave it. Valma, you've got a mustache. Well, have I got the thing for you? Two flaming sambucas, please. What can I say? Life does have a sense of humor. It turns out that Fred is so obsessed with Valma that he recognized her hands when she slapped him around the face. That's actually the story that they go with. This is why you don't touch any of Valma's weird books, just in case they do that to you. Give him a few years, he'll end up on Milf Manor next. Ugh, I'd punch you if men didn't sexualize women fighting. I would do something, but don't you know, I would be observed in public. That's disgusting, it really is. <laughs> If you don't want to be observed in public, can I suggest the nunnery for you? Fred then enacts his master plan of telling everyone that Valma is actually Valma. Of course, they're all disgusted and immediately remove the crown from her because, let's face it, who wants Valma as royalty? That would be the fastest overthrow of a monarch ever. Just like everything else these days, the serial killer is whatever you need it to be to feel your best. Doesn't matter what reality is, just live in your own deluded fantasy land like we do. Hollywood, everybody, the message of the day. Of course, Norval comes in and swoops it out from under Fred after he saved someone from a pier, which he had just pushed off the pier. But he did it for Gigi, the horse who's now run off. I don't think I need to say the punchline. But where is his precious Gigi? Oh, she's walking past a horse. But seriously, this thing just writes itself. Valma tries to make it up with Daphne. Daphne, I'm sorry, but as a guy, there's so little consequence for your actions. Yeah, men just get away with everything all the time. You have opened my eyes, Valma, and that's why as soon as I get married, I'm gonna get divorced so I can take all the money and the kids in the house. I'm gonna take full advantage of my life of privilege. I'd be an idiot not to at least try and go for it. That's what I'm thinking. I would be a fool not to take advantage of my newfound position within society. I'm already setting up the cameras in the gyms. You've seen nothing yet. Baba Booey! What was that? If that was a reference to something, I do not get it. And I'm mad at myself for being selfish and a bad friend. And so you should be. And you could do what a man would do and take accountability and responsibility for his own actions and use that as a impetus to change in the future and go forth and be a better person. Or you could do what I think you're going to do and just carry on doing the same thing you've always have and blame everybody else. Maybe we should both be guys and just stop caring about feeling so much. Door number two it was. Can't be my fault. Maybe we'll just blame somebody else, eh? Why would I take accountability for my own actions when there's a whole group of people I can blame? But at that moment, the killer arrives. Tries to drag off Velma, but they run away and the chase ensues. There is a brief moment of excitement when he's about to absolutely annihilate Velma. Unfortunately, the fog swaps the weapon and he, it's not a knife anymore. We can only live in hope that one day Velma will get her comeuppance. We get a whole chase scene of them running in
in and out of various different doors like they did in Scooby-Doo. Of course, they couldn't just do it like the original cartoon. Like, hang on, this breaks all the rules of physics. My entire perception of reality is crumbling. Oh no, don't worry, it's just a ride, it's fine. <laughs> that must be one of those witty observations about reality that they've made over there. Yeah, those are always the most hilarious ones, those are. Oh, I can see why female-driven comedy is just so successful now. We can disguise ourselves. That's stupid. Who would ever stop to put on a costume in the middle of a cheese? Let's just keep crapping on Scooby-Doo, everybody. It's not as if the audience of a Scooby-Doo show will actually like the original one. Of course they want us to crap on it. That's comedy, folks. Luckily, just as they're about to be captured by the killer, he gets teleported away in the mist and they're safe. But his phone got swapped for Fred's crown, and so now they've got the killer's phone and can use it to track him down in the next episode. Once again, the next clue to the mystery is just something that fell in Velma's lap. Not through any detective work, just through sheer coincidence. This is basically knives out. I don't think anything has been solved in this by Velma's actual intellect, which isn't surprising when you realize how low it actually is. What on earth is happening? This episode was literally just the hate men episode. It barely had a story. Now it did have a couple of references to Scooby-Doo, which were only in there to go, these are actually stupid, aren't they? Yeah, uh, I don't know why we even did this. I, I'm not gonna put this in my show except to take the piss out of it because these are really just cringe and Hollywood has lived in a land of delusion forever. So no wonder they can't put themselves into somebody else's shoes. They're not even living in their own shoes. They're living in this fantasy world they've made up for themselves, surrounded by people who will just go, yes, 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 yes. Whatever you say, miss, that's the way it is. Never being held accountable, never being told no, and getting given things that you absolutely don't deserve and have never earned. And so to put yourself in someone else's shoes would require empathy and actual some kind of grounding in reality. And Hollywood just don't have that. They can't write that. And so they write this. Because I don't know what this was. This wasn't a mystery show. This was just one person's deluded ramblings about a world they can't possibly comprehend. So congratulations, the team of Valma. You simultaneously wrote one of the least Scooby-Doo episodes you could possibly make and one of the most fantastical pieces of fiction that has ever been created. But don't worry, at least your comedy wasn't funny. It was just trying for accurate observations, like any female-driven comedy would. And even in that case, where you define your own bar of quality, your own judgment metric, you still failed. Because you are so awful at what you do, you can't even succeed when you define your own win condition. So congratulations, Valma. And I'll see you in the finale. Because those are my thoughts, and what are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.